Hi everybody. Uh, welcome to my channel. This is Sangamo Outdoors. Uh, I'm calling it Sangamo Outdoors because uh, I live in Sangamon County and uh, I really got going with uh, doing some archery hunting, doing the river bottoms along Sangamon River and uh, I'm hitting two parks that I really like. Uh, San Chris about 20 miles east of here. Uh, it's really close to where I live and I really like to hunt the park. I worked at the park for uh, the state one summer and uh, fell in love with it. And uh, Another park about 40 miles northwest of here is uh, Jim Edgar's Side M. Love that park as well. Uh, this winter I was lucky enough to have shotgun tags at one park and muzzleload tags at the other park, but I had a son that ended up going to the hospital in St. Louis for most of shotgun and was a load season so I really just never got out. I did like seven bow hunt trips this year or crossbow hunts and uh, I did get one spike buck and my kids make fun of me for how little it was but I thought it was a doe it was walking away from me and uh, all I know is it tastes good and they love the bacon and sausage and stuff that we're eating from it so uh, uh, like I said welcome to my channel. Uh, up here you might see uh, my buddy Steve uh, shot this buck, uh, I think November 4th, 2017. He uh, was uh, a buck I shot 28 minutes after I shot a doe with a crossbow. The first two shots I took with a crossbow were uh, yeah, him and his girlfriend. Uh, I shot her because she was about to get in my wind and uh, frankly I needed some meat. and. She presented a great shot. She ran up a hill, crashed into some tall trees, talked to a couple of buddies, and they said, hey, she made a lot of racket going down. She probably sounds like bucks fighting, so start rattling. I started rattling, and, uh, you know, I uh, looked across the river, and there's three bucks. He was the, uh, the middle of the three bucks. Uh, there was one that was a little smaller and one that was quite a bit bigger. Uh, the smallest one jumped in the river, swam across to me, and was just about to hit my wind when I saw he had followed him and was in a great spot and uh, took the shot and I gotta say I bought a barrel crossbow for 249 bucks and uh, first two shots for those two. Uh, this buck here was a 10 pointer. He, uh, not a monster by any means but I think he scored 237 and 7 eighths. Uh, 10 pointer, I'm uh, pretty happy with him. He's Probably uh, young, about a year away from being a real monster, but uh, I couldn't be happier with him. So, um, about my channel, uh, boy, uh, my wife bought me a GoPro and uh, I had it mounted on my bow. I fell from my tree stand, uh, didn't damage the bow or the GoPro, but I certainly damaged myself. So, uh, using my Matthews bow is no longer going to be an option, so I switched to crossbow. Uh, the way I had the GoPro mounted on my bow, it just I can't figure out how to do it great with my crossbow yet. So uh, a lot of the clips you're going to see for deer hunting on my channel are uh, clips with a, you know, um, I see a buck that's I'm not going to be able to shoot, and I whip out my cell phone and take a you know a quick video of it. So you see some very short clips on my channel just things that I just don't know how to edit and do things right so when you see the narrow screen it's because it was from an iPhone uh, you do see one of my my more hit videos is one I think I call it the river bottom monster maybe from November 8th should have been like 2013 or 14 um, I had a buck I'd been after called Forkhead he was just a big four pointer and uh, <coughs> bless you um, he got downwind to me and I knew he was back there and I was thinking about shooting him and I had a monster buck chase a doe right at me and their wind was perfect the doe was going to lead her right to me um, one thing led to another and right before this monster got in my shooting lane old fork head blew when he got in my wind and uh, I was coaching football at the time and I had a morning off of football and I whipped out this little portable camera we had used for recording football and popped popped it open and got a clip of uh, the, the doe and then this buck with the 
just a huge rack. If this was a 137, this one was probably a 170 or 180 with a monster drop tine. And you can kind of see them walking through the woods away from me. Uh, glad I didn't have a lot of audio on that at all because you probably would have just heard me crying as a buck of a lifetime walked away from me. Uh, I do have a couple other bucks that had swam through the river to come to my grunt and just never gave me a good shot and I got some videos of that and then some small twins and fawns and other little things that just I was bored and wasn't going to shoot them so I had those you know little clips either on my phone or somewhere in memory on my Chromebook or somewhere so so far my channel is a whole bunch of those things uh, my two biggest hits are one that I call a uh, cast like muskie, where uh, my dad and my son and I had been trolling for walleye and somehow got into a, some crappie. And we had, I looked over, my dad had a spinning rig with a spinner on it, and I popped off the spinner and added a keel weight and just used the little spinner he had and was trying to get some crappie. And we went around a point and something hit and missed. And I said, Man, that was a good one. My dad said, hey, It was weeds. And then, uh, 10 seconds later, I've got a 47 inch muskie on his spinning rod and reel that he uses for crappie that had eight pound tests that probably hadn't been changed in five or six years. Uh, I have no idea how this fish made its way to the boat. We had a, a net that was a crappie net that we never should have tried to put a muskie in. Uh, a lot of panic and bad judgments and I apologize for how that muskie was handled uh, in the net, in the boat. It was 47 and a half inches, and we're going to guess it was somewhere between 32 and 36 pounds. We never got a weight on it. I got it back in the water, and it swam away, and I, I pray to God that it, it survived. It, it, was, it was beat up pretty good by the time we got it back in the water, and I apologize for that. I should have handled that fish much better. Um, the biggest video I have as far as hits is uh, unboxing the, the, uh, what I called the March Mystery Tackle Box, but... Uh, Honestly, it was a, uh, a February that arrived to my house on March 2nd, and I opened it and tagged it with the uh, mystery tackle box info, and I got to say, uh, I think it's got a bunch of hits, over 800, I think. Uh, my son, Nolan, was telling everybody all about it in the background. Uh, he's a little guy we adopted from Hong Kong, and then we went back and got his buddy, Francis a couple of years later so uh, my wife and I have five kids uh, one of them coach coach football Pleasant Plains this past year and uh, <clears throat> that's Colton he's 23 my daughter is 20 she goes to Mississippi State Hale State uh, love love Mississippi State and uh, Jamie is lives here with us full-time uh, she's a uh, eighth grader here at junior high here in town and then we have Francis who's 10 about to be 11 we adopted him from Hong Kong last February and then we have Nolan that we've had for several years uh, he's seven we've had him since he was three we also adopted him from Hong Kong so uh, my wife and I and a house full of kids and a couple dogs and uh, we stay very busy but so uh, this channel is you know, kind of my escape from reality wife and two daughters are not home tonight and uh, I think my youngest son is asleep on the couch now I'm gonna have to cut this off and get him in bed uh, walk over here and give a little quick view of my my family that's from left to right that's Jamie Colton uh, Nolan Riley and Francis yeah, yeah they're my pride and joy along with Steven up here and um, uh, go ahead and like and subscribe to this that would be wonderful and uh, I'm gonna open up some mystery tackle box things here as uh, we get to the middle of April in the middle of May uh, I got a fishing trip I do in June or July I think this year we're gonna do June that I go to uh, Grand Rapids Minnesota we fish at Satco's Resort we hit Fawn Lake, Cottonwood, Island Lake, Deer, Moose, Little Moose, Pug Hole for Bluegill and Johnson Lake. I've got a bunch of videos that are just, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50 second clips of us catching bass. Uh, 
we got a ton of bluegill out of Pug, and we got a ton of crappie out of Island, and we get some bass in Northern. Uh, Fawn Lake is just loaded with muskies. Uh, I caught a 37 and a 38 and a half last summer, and um, got several muskies there. Um, I love the black harasser with a nickel blade. Love that. Uh, Honestly, some of the water is so clear up there, I think I'll use some of the winter baits that came in the uh, February mystery tackle box. And, uh, you know, I love watching uh, Lake Fork Guy and John B. and Lunkers TV and some of those guys with their mystery tackle box stuff. And, uh, you know, i love to be them someday. I don't think I will be, but, uh, you know, just an old guy here in central Illinois that's trying to figure out how to use some technology and have some fun with some hunting and fishing and loving the outdoors. So, uh, like I said, please like and uh, subscribe and we'll see you out there on the water and in the woods.